scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog podcast. Now, recently I was updating my forum posts on the Big Finish website. Basically, whenever I was doing a Tin Dog podcast that related to a Big Finish release, I would pop it on there so that if anyone needed to access it, they didn't have to listen to the Tin Dog podcast. God help them. And I realised I'd missed out a recording. Now, for every month of last year... January all the way through to November, I was recording one of the Destiny of the Doctors reviews. I'd got all the way to the 10th Doctor, and then things went horribly wrong with Audio Go. And when I say horribly wrong, what I mean to say is, well, you know, things went horribly wrong with them, and we couldn't get our Doctor Who's. This is people's lifestyles and lives and livelihood we were talking about. But of course, being Doctor Who fans, all we cared about was the fact that disc number 11 might not be with us. Now, this story is the culmination of the entire 10 stories. It had to be several things. Firstly, it had to be listenable to by itself. It'd have to have enough hints about the other 10 stories in order to attract you to listen to those if you'd just bought the Matt Smith one. It also had to be performed by someone from the current series. You can take that box with Jenna Louise Coleman or Jenna Coleman. And it also had to, well, sew up all of the loose ends. A difficult shopping list of a thing, but we can live with that. Eventually, via the wonderful gift of Big Finish, this did indeed arrive as a download. But because of the hoo-ha of November and then onto December, I just didn't get round to recording a review. That is not to say that I didn't enjoy it, because you know I did. Now if you've bought all of the others, you will have bought this one just to have the full set. Yes, Matt Smith is still classed as the 11th Doctor, because as far as they're concerned... Let's face it, this was written before the anniversary special. This was written when Eccleston could have come back, when McGann could have been the villain, when the 50th anniversary story could have been so much different slash better. Not to say that it wasn't great, but I for one could do without John Hurt and could have done with an evil Paul McGann. So much better. So much more damaged. So much more easier on the numbers. Because I just can't look at Matt Smith without thinking you're Doctor 12, Regeneration 13, and so on and so on. It's in my head and I can't not think it. Thanks, Moffat. You've really given me sleepless nights and I actually mean that. I do have dreams about these things. Perhaps I need help. Or perhaps I need to just let it go. No, neither of those things seem to be an option. Perhaps I should just put up with it. It is, after all, only a TV show. Yeah, right. Getting back to this particular story. It sums up everything about Doctor Who. It's called the Time Machine. What more do you need? Now, because these are almost companion chronicles, almost performances, you get something quite, quite nice. Small cast, small characters. That works. It's set in a very nice university town. Perhaps, I believe, the same one that Tim Drury lives in. But let's not confuse matters by talking about other podcasts. Oh no. The important thing here is that someone is building a time machine. They're building a time machine in the physics department, which is perfectly acceptable and is indeed, well, let's face it, it's been covered quite recently in the Queen of Mercia story. Academics making their own time machines and fiddling about with the past slash future. But here we have something really cool. The guy getting instructions to build the time machine is getting instructions from himself via something that is a little bit familiar to anyone who's seen the Doctor's wife. Yeah, I for one am very happy with this story. I don't want to spoil it any more than this. But the ten things mentioned earlier on are indeed dealt with here. All of the stories are not important. The objects that the stories provided and the outcomes from those stories with the changed histories, they work. They fit. They influence things in ways you couldn't possibly have imagined. 
unless you were the writer itself. So yes, this is a good ending to... Don't think of it as an 11-part story. Think of it as 11 stories that just happen to fit together and end here. So thank you, Big Finish, for sorting this out. Thank you for bringing us this. If you've enjoyed these, please go away and don't just listen to Big Finish, but dig out the Companion Chronicles. I'm sure I could get around to producing some sort of recommendation list. That's if you want to hear such a thing. The Companion Chronicles range is ending, but as it contains almost 100 releases, I'm sure that's enough to be getting on with. So now that I've finally covered all of those 11 stories, I'll go away and come back next time and talk about, yes, you've guessed it, Doctor Who. But next time, something a little bit different. Because we've all been talking about Dark Eyes winning an award. Dark Eyes 2's come out, and I was going to do a review of Dark Eyes 2. But when I listened to Dark Eyes 2, it made me go, who's that? What's going on there? And it reminded me that it'd been a while since I'd listened to Dark Eyes 1. So if you've not heard Dark Eyes 1, join me and we'll do what we did with Web of Fear. Every single story within the story, i.e. episode or disc if you prefer, we'll review them one at a time and we'll go through Dark Eyes together. So join me with the Dark Eyes rewatch. Re-listen? Yeah. The Dark Eyes re-listen from episode one. Story one. So until next time, be seeing you. Alice, could you tell me what's going on here? Alice was relieved. Professor Chivers, this is... In one bound, the Doctor reached Chivers and completed the introduction. The Doctor! Hello. Lovely time machine, I'm here to dismantle it. Sorry. You say you've made a time loop. Think about it. What shapes a loop? Round. Alice answered. Oval, at the very least. Depends on how many dimensions you use to track causality. Let's keep things simple the doctor said, holding up a hand, making a circle with his finger and thumb. Let's say it's round. What else is round? A hole. Things get in through holes. You cannot stop us. Hello, said the doctor, cautiously. Why would I want to stop you? We are already here. So I see. Who are you? He asked. We are the Crevix. The doctor's right, Alice replied defiantly. You don't belong here. You're like beetles inside a clock. You see the cogs, the working. You hear every tick, but you can't tell the time. The Crevix took a step closer, and suddenly Alice didn't feel quite so brave. The doctor's clock has stopped. Doctor Who, The Time Machine, by Matt Fitton, performed by Jenna Coleman, with Michael Cochran as Chivers, and Nicholas Briggs as the Crevix. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its connected properties are copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Hoostrology, a time traveller's almanac, is available through Telos Publishing or Amazon. Visit www.hoostrology.com for further information. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.